Hello everyone and welcome here. My name is Heather aka Hey Hey Crochet and in today's tutorial I'm going to show you how to make these super fun, super easy granny square balaclavas. The customization possibilities with these babies are endless. I cannot wait to show you how to make these. But before we get started, I am going to break down the construction of these. The one I will be showing you today is this one. It is very basic and easy. And if that's your style, you know, that's good. But if you're wanting to make it a little more fun, a little more crazy, then fret not because I have very many fun ones. I have a new model here. I do not know what to name her, but she needs a name because she is fabulous. This one is probably my favorite that I created. And for all of these squares and appliques or appliques or whatever the word is that I used, I will have linked in a playlist down below. I compiled lots of different granny squares and lots of appliques and stuff from other designers. So if you're looking for fun ways to spice up your balaclava, all of those will be linked down below. For this one, I used the swirl granny squares by happy berry crochet so you can follow that all you are going to need for this balaclava is four granny squares of any kind the construction of these are very easy you just need four granny squares that meet the measurements you need and then face ribbing and neck ribbing the only thing that you need to make sure is that they meet a certain size that you will need the granny squares that fit me best are all five by five inch granny squares and i've made also a few which is these two that are five and a half inch by five and a half inch squares. They are slightly big on me, but they're still wearable all the same. For reference, my head is 22 inches big. <laughs> but yeah, just note if you have a bigger head than me, you might want to go for the five and a half by five and a half inch squares. Or if you're making it for someone who has an even bigger head, go for about six inch. If you're making these for a child, then I would go for, for three and a half inches to four inches. And it's really easy to add extra rows to your granny squares if you're trying to meet a certain measurement like for several of these. For this one, I used my eyeball cardigan square, but instead of making it an eyeball, I turned it into smiley faces. And I followed that exactly, but I needed half an inch more because I was experimenting with sizes that I just added a round of half double crochet to it. And the same with this, this is the same square as this one, but the green round, I worked a half double crochet round. So depending on how many more inches or half an inch that you need, you can just add on another double crochet round or a half double crochet round. And you can also play around with your hook size. You can size up or size down. I'm going to show you how to make this basic one, but you can bypass the whole granny square part and make four granny squares of whatever you want and then watch this video to find out how to construct it all together. So without further ado, let's get started. All right, you will need to start off by making four granny squares. I will be showing you how to make this basic granny square, but you can use any granny square you want. Just make sure that it measures five to five and a half inches. This one measures almost exactly five inches and that is the perfect size for my head. So with any granny squares you use, like these stars for instance, to make them five inches, I added an extra row of half double crochet right here to make it meet the measurements I wanted it to. You will need to start off by making a magic ring. And then you're going to chain three. The first chain three of every round 
counts as your first double crochet. So this is one double crochet and you will work three more into the magic ring. So you have four double crochet. Now chain two, work four more double crochet into the ring. Chain two, work four more double crochet into the ring. Chain two, and work four more double crochet into the ring. Alright, and then chain two more, close the magic ring, and slip stitch into the first stitch of the round, which is the top of the chain three at the beginning. Now you should have this little square. Chain three that counts as your first stitch of the round. And then we're going to work one double crochet into the next three stitches. One, two, three. And in this corner, in every corner around, we are going to work two double crochet into that chain space, chain two, and work two more double crochet into that same chain space. And then we'll work one double crochet into the next four stitches. And we will repeat what we did for this corner. We work two double crochet into the chain space, chain two, and work two more double crochet into that same chain space. Then work one double crochet into the next four stitches. And just repeat for the next two chain spaces. All right, and we're back at the beginning of the round. So we will need to slip stitch into the top of this stitch, this chain three. And this is what your square should look like so far. So for round three, we will chain three and then work one double crochet into the next five stitches. And do the same thing for the corners. Work two double crochet into that chain space, chain two, and work two more double crochet into that same chain space. And then we are going to work one double crochet into the next eight stitches.
and then do the same for the corner as you have been doing two double crochet chain two and then two more double crochet into this chain space and just repeat this pattern until the end of the round after you finish the last corner on round three there should be two stitches left just work one double crochet in those next two stitches and then slip stitch into the first stitch slash the top of the chain three for round four chain three and then work one double crochet into the next seven stitches and just repeat what you have been doing for all of the corners two double crochet chain two two double crochet into the same chain space and then work one double crochet in each stitch across and then repeat for all of the corners after you finish the last corner on round four you should have four stitches left so just work one double crochet into the last four stitches and then slip stitch into the first stitch or the top of the chain three and for me this is five inches so I'm going to stop working my granny squares but if you are still trying to reach five inches or just need bigger squares in general then you can just keep working in the round and if you're just barely there and you don't want to increase it that much more you can replace these double crochet rounds with half double crochet rounds or single crochet you can fasten off here or you can continue working in the round after you have your square the size you want it repeat that three more times so you have four squares in total. I have all of my squares done now and next we'll be joining them. So first we only need three of them and you will need to seam them in a line like this. You can use whatever joining method you want. I know people have a joining method that they prefer so you can use any one you want. I will be using the invisible join method. I'll have a link to the video that I learned from down in the description box below. So if you wanna use that method, you can check out that video. But yeah, if you don't want to, use any method you want and seam these three squares together. After seaming these three together, it should look something like this. And then for your last square, we're going to sew three of these corners to these three squares. We're gonna sew it on the back. So this corner to this, the top to the middle, and this side to this. So you're just gonna seam around and attach it to this. And I'll show you what that looks like after I'm done. Continue to use whatever seaming method you are currently using. And this is what it should be looking like. These are the three squares that we sewed together at the beginning. And this is the square in the back we attached it to. Now we will be working the face ribbing. For the ribbing, I am sizing down to a four millimeter hook. You don't have to do this. You can use the five millimeter hook you've been using, but I like the way that it looks. I think it looks tighter and cleaner. So I'm going to use a hook size down from what I was using, but you do not have to do this. 
also create a slip knot and then attach the yarn at one of the corners of the balaclava. And then you will chain as many as you need for it to comfortably reach under your chin and attach to the opposite side. I'm chaining 25 because that's what's most comfortable for me. Just chain as many as you think you'll need and then try it on and see if it comfortably reaches to the other side. And if not, you can chain more or less. I'll show you what it looks like once I have my chains. So after you have as many chains as you need, just slip stitch into the other corner of your balaclava. And then we will be chaining five. In the second chain from the hook, work one single crochet. And then in, work one single crochet into the next three chains. Then work one slip stitch into the next two chains. Turn your work. Skip those two slip stitches you just made. Then working in the back loop only, which is this loop instead of working through both you're only going to be working through the back loop so work one single crochet into the back loop only of the next three three stitches one two three and then work one normal single crochet into the last last stitch Turn your work in chain one. Work one normal single crochet into the first stitch. And then work one single crochet into the back loop only of the next three stitches. Slip stitch in the next two chains. Turn your work, skip those two slip stitches, and then work one single crochet into the back loop only of the next three stitches. And then work one normal single crochet into the last stitch. Turn your work chain one and then you just repeat that in this top edge you always work one normal single crochet and the three stitches in between you work a single crochet into the back loops only and to progress further you just slip stitch into the next two chains or next two stitches when you make it here I will come back when I have made it across the chain. So after you finish working in the chain, you just work in to the hat hood part as 
you were working in a chain. So, slip stitch into the next two stitches. Turn your work. Skip those slip stitches. Work one single crochet into the back loop only of the next three stitches. And then one normal single crochet into the last stitch. So yeah, you just keep repeating that until you reach the, reach the end of the ribbing, which would be right here. After you make it back around, fasten off and then use this tail to sew this both ends of the ribbing together. Okay, sorry if the lighting's a little weird. The sun went down, so now I'm using the overhead lighting. But now we will do the neck ribbing. And for the neck ribbing, it's basically the same as this face ribbing, but it will be wider. I'm going to be doing 15 stitches wide instead of just four. So it's going to be much wider. You can do whatever you want. You can make it shorter or you can make it longer. I have, of all of the balaclavas I've made, I've made some with 15 and some with only 10. So it's really whatever you want. You can do it one of those or longer or shorter. We do basically the same thing. So we're just going to make a slip knot, attach the yarn, and then I'm going to be chaining 16. And then you single crochet into the second chain from the hook. And then work one single crochet into each chain until the end of the chain. And then we will be slip stitching into the other side of the chain that we worked this ribbing on. So just slip stitch into that. And then the same, turn your work and then work one single crochet into the back loop only of the next 14 stitches. And then work one normal single crochet into the last stitch. And then just repeat that ribbing all the way around until you meet right here again. After you meet back where you started, just fasten off. And sew this together. After that is all seamed up, you are all done. You can proceed to like this strawberry one, add some appliques or whatever you want. Again, in the description box, I'll have linked the playlist where I compiled lots of ideas and inspiration for different things you can add and do with your balaclava.
that is it for this tutorial. I hope you enjoyed it. And if you liked it, please give it a big thumbs up and consider subscribing and turning on that bell notification so you can be notified when I come out with new videos and tutorials and whatnot. I hope you have a great rest of your day. Bye.